This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. Okay, Iowa Republican Party leader, it's time for your caucus. Do you have all the materials you need? Yes. Do you have the site selected and advertised? Yes. Are you ready to report the results of your precincts in a timely fashion? Yes. Do you have a backup plan for reporting? Yes. Good deal. Now, Iowa Democratic Party leader, it's time for your caucus. Do you have all the materials you need? Hold on. Do you have the sites selected and advertised? Hold on. Are you ready to report the results of your precincts in a timely fashion? Hold on. Do you have a backup plan for reporting? Hold on. Republican results? Check. Democratic results. Um, where are the Democratic results? Hey, IDP leader, where are your results? Hold on. Well, I guess that it's time for some roasted opinions about that now, isn't it? Most of the time, I'm really proud of the fact that I was born and raised in Iowa. Growing up in America's heartland was a great experience. I suppose most people feel that way, though, when it comes to talking about where they were born and raised. Every once in a while, though, things happen which make a person feel a little embarrassed about where they grew up or where they live now. Monday night and all day Tuesday was such a time for me because of the Hawkeye Cockeye debacle. Now let's bear in mind that the Republican caucus went off without a single hitch. The only thing of any significance is that Donald Trump, the bad orange man, finished with a margin of about 34 to 1 over the rest of the Republican field combined. Bad? Maybe, but he's pretty popular with the GOP these days nonetheless. The Democratic Party caucuses, on the other hand, yeesh. First, let's talk about venues. In order to make certain that the caucuses included Iowans who were out of state on February 3rd, the Democratic Party thought it was a really good idea to place satellite locations in other states. As if that wasn't cringe-worthy enough, they also put caucus locations in other nations. That's right, the same party who spent the last three years talking about foreign interference in American elections held caucuses in Paris, Glasgow, and Tbilisi. Next, let's talk about cybersecurity. The IDP decided that they would pay over $60,000 to purchase access for a software app which they intended to use to report their results. That app was written by, I kid you not, Shadow Incorporated. Shadow is a tech company wholly owned by Acronym, a progressive nonprofit organization. And as if that look wasn't bad enough, the campaigns of Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg also purchased software applications from this company. It can't get worse than that, though, right? Wrong. You see, many of the people who operate Acronym and Shadow Inc. are familiar with political campaigns. After all, they used to work for the campaigns of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and they clearly label both Shadow Incorporated and Acronym as progressive. No appearance of impropriety in that is there, especially when the CEO of Acronym is married to one of Buttigieg's senior campaign managers. And that software app? Do you think that the IDP trained their precinct chiefs on how to use this application, or that they were even going to be using the app? Or that they needed to have it installed on their devices? Do you think that they even did some basic testing on the app to make sure that there weren't any coding errors? Um, no. Just no. That left the entire country asking the IDP if they had the results of the voting for most of the day Tuesday and Wednesday. The Iowa Democratic Party, the Iowa caucus system, and the state of Iowa look absolutely ridiculous right now. The routine calls for the end of the caucuses and Iowa's first-in-the-nation status have been renewed this year as well. The rest of the nation doesn't understand why Iowa still uses caucusing, and they don't understand why Iowa always goes first. At the moment, it's a bit hard to defend either of those things when the decisions of the IDP leadership have made every Iowa registered Democrat look like idiots. I know a lot of Iowa Democrats, strangely enough, and most of them are smart, thoughtful people with plenty of common sense. They are embarrassed and even enraged by this debacle more so even than an Iowan expat. If there was ever an excuse to force through the two great changes, 
the end of the caucus system in Iowa, and the end of Iowa's first-in-the-nation status. This is it. It leaves me wondering if the leadership of the IDP is fully aware of the risks they created with this mess, or if they were simply hoodwinked by progressives outside of Iowa who would rather see California's primaries be first in the nation. After all, California is the spiritual home of the progressive movement. It would make more sense to many people who don't live in Iowa for the candidates to be cruising around Cali for a couple of years every election cycle, right? Because that would allow even more justification for ignoring all of the people who live between the Rockies and the Appalachians. Why should they matter? What so many people forget is that because Iowa and New Hampshire are first, candidates spend years campaigning in those states. Campaign season starts about two weeks after midterms. By the end of the next year, people in Iowa and New Hampshire cannot throw a rock without hitting a campaign sign. Do people really want that to move to their state? Do the candidates want to move their initial campaigning from a state with just over 3 million residents to one with nearly 40 million? Does anyone realize how much yard signs cost? How about phone banks? Maybe they do, and maybe they just don't care. It's true. I don't live in Iowa anymore. Some would say that that means I really have no say anymore either. But nothing can take my Iowa roots away. And I believe wholeheartedly that Iowa should remain a caucus state and the first state to cast ballots in the primary season. The caucuses do more than determine the candidates. They also help to determine the planks of the platforms that both parties present to the nation. But this year's Democratic caucuses? Yeah, that just can't happen again. Get your crap together, IDP, before you marginalize flyover country even more in national politics.